Hello and welcome to Big Orbit Games, Games unboxing video of the Force Wheel Trial Deck Rizard the Undead Lord Darkness Deck. My name is Simon, I'm joined today by James. Hello, I'm James. And we're going to be unboxing and going through this. So I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail about the entirety of the deck, we're just going to show you what's in here and what you get, assuming that you're a new player to Force of Will, just so you have an idea of what you're getting into if you're looking at buying the decks. So first of all you have a quick rules reference, this is useful for when you're first learning how to play, uh, it just gives you a quick rules guide on what all the different card types are and different words mean that you need for playing, what the game area is like, uh, what the turn structure is and how to uh, actually go about doing battles and judgments and stuff. Useful for the first time you're playing because it just gives you a brief overview of everything you also get in here a play map. Now if you're not used to playing card games, this is incredibly useful because it shows you the zones and where you put cards. Um, so it shows you like where your magic stone deck goes, where your main deck, graveyard and stuff. So um, very useful if you're just playing card games for the first time. However, unfortunately it is a little bit small, as you can see from my hands, hopefully. <laughs> um, there we go. You're easily going to start running out of room. A couple of resonators in play and you're going to very quickly start running out of room on this mat. So, first few games will be fine. After that though, you need to upgrade something like a nice pretty mat like Dark Alice. <laughs> you also get in here a rules reference sheet. So, this does fold out fully, but I'm not going to fold it out all the way. This is useful for once you've started playing and you've got some more questions about the nitty gritties or the details of the rules. This is where you head to the references, explains everything in very boring formal text. So if you have any questions, this is where you head to first. And then we're on to the deck. So you get a 40 card pre-constructed deck. Um, there is no maximum size, so you can just increase it, but I'd recommend always sticking to 40. And you also get 10 magic stones, which go in a magic stone deck. So the magic stones, um, maximum 20, minimum 10, and you get 10 in here. They are all single will, so they just produce one darkness, because this is just a pure darkness deck. So, right from the top, we have Rizard, which is on his J rule aside when it's uh, out of the packaging, so the desecrating vampire. However, to explain him, we'll start with his ruler side. So he starts as a ruler. I'm also going to explain this as if you are new to the game. I'm not going to go into huge details. I'm not going to explain every intricacy and every rule. I'm just going to go through things briefly, but by trying to explain it. So the ruler side of Rizard, the Undead Lord, has an ability. Pay two darkness. Put the top two cards of your main deck into your graveyard. Seems simple enough. Hmm. Doesn't sound that great. <laughs> <laughs> You're milling your own deck. That's not good. Then you can do. You can also do a judgment. So this flips him over to his J ruler side. So, for staff, he now becomes a pseudo resonator. He has 500 attack and 500 defense. He gains imperishable. Uh, James's favorite word in Force of Will. Uh, without going into too much depth that imperishable means if he's killed instead of becoming an abilityless void he gets to retain his abilities when he flips back to a ruler which means he can then judgment again he has a few abilities when he enters the field so this is when he's J activated when you've done your judgment you may put up to two cards from your hand into your chant standby area face down uh, I'll get to that when we get to some of his chant standbys this card then gets 200, 200 for each card in your chance standby area. And he has a God's Art. So some of the rulers and all the rulers in the trial decks have a God's Art ability. God's Arts can only be done once per game, so they're big effects. This one is the March of Undead. So two darkness and four void, so six in total cost to do the God's Art. Remove any number of resonators in your graveyard from the game. Ah, all of a sudden it's starting to make sense, his first ability. For each card removed this way, each player banishes a resonator and discards a card. Ooh. So this is basically a very big way of board wiping. Mm. Just wiping the field clean of everything. And if you don't have anything on the field, just 
your opponent has to get rid of it. <laughs> and you don't have to. Well, you, apart from you have to discard. You have to discard, but then that's never too much of a problem for Darkness, is it? No. But he's a 500 500, so. He's yeah. Quite weak. He's, <laughs> he is a bit weak for a J Roller at 500 500. He's got imperishable, though. But this is it. He's imperishable. Mm. So. On to the deck itself. We have, first of all, Dark Purge. This is a spell, Chant Instant. So this means you can cast it in your opponent's turn as well as yours. Costs two will, so one darkness and one of any. And it's target J resonator gains minus 600, minus 600 until end of turn. So J resonator means it can target either a normal resonator or a J ruler. And it's minus 600, minus 600, even though it says gains, it's a minus. Um, which can be used, this can always be used as a kill spell for killing off weak resonators or severely weakening big ones. Yeah, I've had it quite annoyingly done to me quite a lot of times because um, there's a lot of cards that prevent your guys from taking damage. But this isn't taking damage, this is just debuffs. Yep, so. which is, ugh, it gets around a lot of things, so that's very nasty. Because if you ever have zero defense, a resonator ever has zero defense, it dies. So, there's four of those in there. We then have Endless Night, which is another instant spell. Um, destroy target resonator with your your opponent controls, then all resonators gain minus 200, minus 200 till end of turn. So you have to be careful this doesn't backlash on yourself too much because it's all resonators, but this is could be fantastic at wiping a board clear of little weenie resonators. <laughs> yeah. And I've seen it being used to that effect repeatedly, mm. which is why you get four in there. Mm. Black, uh, sorry, darkness is all about killing creatures, uh, killing resonators. Sorry, I'm trying not to use magic terms as much as possible. So this is uh, Niflheim, the Realm of the Dead. This is an addition field with subtype Grave, Groove. So this comes into play and gives like a global, um, a global effect. It costs two to play. Zombies you control gain plus 200, plus 200, so zombies is a race type. And then you can also banish this card as a cost to put the top five cards of your main deck into your graveyard. So, yeah. it, it's buffing your zombie army and then has a bit of use for something later on. Supporting Rizard. Yeah. So, you get four of those in there, and to note, those are rares as well, and you get four of them in there. Then we get Persephone, the Nether Empress. So she's a 700-700 Queen Resonator for 4 will. She has Stealth. So, so going on with the ability, your J, um, sorry, her trigger for it is you have to have Rizard or, uh, on either side as your Ruler or J Ruler and 10 or more cards in your graveyard. Um, so still so, go into the chant standby area. Yep, yeah, so they go face down into the chant standby area, and when that condition is met, which in this deck would be 10 or more cards in your graveyard, you can then um, play it without paying its mana cost, uh, without paying its will cost. And when it enters your field from the chant standby area, put target resonator with cost 4 or less from your graveyard into your field. So you get to reanimate one of your big beasts as well. It's pretty tough. So with 700, 700 as well, mm. she's a big, tough, tough resonator. And you put two of her down with all Rizard. Yeah, using Rizard's ability, you can put two of them into your chant standby area. Um, it costs two to put anything into your chant standby area, by the way, which goes face down. You then have to have magic stones equal to the cost to activate them. Equal or more. Equal or more, sorry. To be able to activate them, but once the trigger condition is met. Uh, and if you note from the slightly gold coloured border, and if you zoom in here on the collector's number, you notice it says SR, which means it's a super rare. So you're even getting four super rares in this deck. You get so many good value cards in these trial decks. We then have the Prowler of Niflheim, so 300-300 for attack and defense. He only costs one to play. It's a zombie. 
And when he enters your field, put the top two cards of your main deck into your graveyard. So you can see there's a lot of putting into your graveyard here. And we have four of those. We then have the Soulless Soldier, 600-500 for attack and defense. He costs two to play. He's a zombie as well. And when he enters your field, put the top two cards of your main deck into your graveyard. He's just a slightly more powerful Prowler. And you get four of those in there. We now have the Underground Dragger. So 700-700 for attack and defense. Three will to play. He's also a zombie. He also has stealth. And his trigger is you control a darkness magic stone. So any of the stones from the trial deck. And a resonator was put into a graveyard from your field this turn. So one of your resonators has been killed. And when he enters your field from the chance done by area, destroy target resonator your opponent controls that dealt damage this turn. So he's getting revenge, really. Mm. So useful to have for post combat. That's um, four of those. With Niflheim. Is it Niflheim that boosts zombies? Yeah, Niflheim yeah. gives him plus 200, 200. He's a 900, 900. Yeah. Get multiples of these out because their, their bonuses do stack. Ugh. Ugh. Foul. We also have regalia in the deck. So each deck comes with the regalia that pertains to the ruler of the deck. Uh, regalias, these ones cost nothing, so you can just put them into play on your turn. Your opponent's J ruler loses and cannot gain imperishable and swiftness. So most regalias boost your ruler. This one's actually um, <laughs> debuffing your opponents. James has a sad face there because he loves the word imperishable. And swiftness is also good in my deck. It is so. useful, yeah. uh, but you love Imperishable. Um, well, yeah. It also yeah. has a second ability, so you can rest it to give your J ruler 200-200 until end of turn. However, if you if your ruler was Rizard the Desecrating Demons, uh, the Desecrating Demon, Desecrating Vampire, so it's on its J ruler side, it also gains whenever a Resonator was dealt damage by this card this turn is put to a graveyard, put it into your field until end of turn <laughs> and you can pay one less to play its God's Art ability this turn so you kill it and steal it yep <laughs> and to note though that the until end of turn is it gains the ability to do this until end of turn uh, so any damage dealt by this card that would kill um, a resonator you gain control of them permanently and his God's Art costs one less I guess that's why he's so weak yeah because he steals things yeah <laughs> And remove three cards in your graveyard from the game to put this card from your graveyard into your hand. And because it's free, you can then just play it out. So if your opponent has destroyed it, you just get it back for free, mm. basically. Uh, and it's also a rare. And you get four of them. It's fantastic. You also have the new Jean d'Arc, the Shadow Princess of Purity. Uh, she's a Shadow Resonator, 300-300. only costs one to play. And when a Resonator is put into a graveyard from your opponent's field... Rest target resonator your opponent controls. So you're punishing them for letting their resonators die. Which gives all Rizard a quick chance to snatch their stuff. Yep, because you can attack a rested resonator directly without having to use target attack. Mm. So you re kill one of theirs, then rest another one, attack it with Rizard, steal it. Ooh, this deck's mean. And you get four of those in there. And then we have the mass-produced giant landmine. So this costs two to play. It's another stealth, so again, two to put face down into your chance standby area, and then you need two magic stones, which you will have had because of the two, in order to trigger its condition. Its trigger condition is when a J resonator your, you control is attacked. So if someone goes to attack Rizard or one of your resonators, when it enters the field from a chance standby area, it then deals a thousand damage to target attacking J Resonator, mm. which is enough to kill most J Resonators. Yeah. And with the Death Sight, if I'm going at you with old Faria. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and you get four of those in there. And then it also becomes a 0 100 chump blocker. Yeah. So there we go. That is all the cards in the Rizard deck. Um, the first thing I will say is you should definitely look at picking up two copies of Necronomicon. Mm, yes. Necronomicon is an addition that goes into the field. I would probably switch two of these for it. Um, 
that effectively um, you remove your, uh, you ignore your deck and your graveyard becomes your deck. Mm. Um, and it just means you can replay everything. It's great to play them late game and especially if you've got stuff, dis you know, discarding your deck straight into your graveyard, having the Necronomicon just is fantastic to put in there. Another thing is the sort of, oh, I can't remember the exact name of it, but the Undead Arthur. Oh, yes. He's a 1000-1000, and he's a zombie, so he gets buffed by Niflheim. And um, so he gives <coughs> plus 200 to all your zombie, all your darkness, sorry, all your darkness resonators. All darkness resonators. And gives a minus 200 to all darkness resonators. So that's... Non-darkness. Non, yes. <laughs> <laughs> plus 200, so to recap... <laughs> He's a zombie, so he gets buffed by things like the Niflheim. He also gives 200, 200 to all Darkness Resonators. So Prowler, Solar Soldier, you know, all of them in here. <laughs> and then minus 200 to all non-Darkness, which is very good at wiping out some of the weenie light decks. Mm. Which would also <laughs> kill your, um, your landmine. But not I'd probably switch the landmine for, yeah. for him. So yeah, there's... There's some really cool cards you can add into the Darkness deck once you've played a few games with it. I mean, I think it's fairly solid as it is. Mm. There's, it's got some good stuff in there. Stoning to Death is another good card. It's an instant, two Darkness, just flat out destroy target resonator. That needs to be in every Darkness deck, though. Yeah. <laughs> good luck finding them. Um, check our website. <laughs> so, yeah, that's definitely a way to look at it. But I think this is one of the more solid trial decks out of the five. Um, and there are so many options you've got for darkness on where to go. Um, I think you can have a lot of fun tinkering with this and playing around with it um, and just being really, really mean. Hmm. So yeah, there we go. That is everything in the Rizard uh, darkness deck for Force of Will. Um, remember, everything you've seen here today can be bought and sold on our website, bigorbitcards.co.uk. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll be unboxing the rest of the trial decks as well. Uh, that is bye from me, Simon. Bye from me, James. I'll see you next time. Bye.